Hey guys, in this video I wanted to talk with you all a minute about why it's important to prepare for natural disasters. I'm sure that you all have seen what has happened in Texas because of Hurricane Harvey uh, and just the mess that's been down there. And hurricanes are not the only thing that happened. Of course, there's wildfires. You know, recently, a year or so ago, the Smoky Mountains suffered a major disaster of the wildfires down in that area. And every year, somewhere in this country, there are some type of a disaster, some type of a natural disaster that affects thousands of people. I mean, from tornadoes, wildfires, even out west, mudslides there's always something that happens and the one thing that we see that happens during every one of these is that there are a lot of people who are unprepared and that makes the situation much worse for them when a disaster does happen and I wanted to take a to start off I wanted to talk about the emergency responders the first responders that are out there these guys are the true heroes of our time. I mean, they leave their own families in times of a disaster to go out and to help complete strangers. They're great folks, but they are limited on what they can do. They can only be in so many places at once. They can only do so much at once. I mean, they're human. It is our responsibility as much as possible to do what we can to make their job a little bit easier uh, you know by us taking a few simple steps we can dramatically increase our own chances of surviving a disaster and help out others around us and not necessarily by giving them aid or aiding them but allowing the emergency workers the first responders the ability to go to someone else who may not have taking the steps to prepare themselves or who just was unable to the elderly that sort of thing and by taking a few basic steps we can significantly increase our chances of survival we can also increase our chances of just our own mentality our own stress level of lowering our own stress in times of a major disaster and anytime a disaster strikes the first thing that happens is people panic. A lot of people just panic. They don't know what to do. And the first thing that you want to do to avoid that happening to you is to make a plan. You need to plan out exactly what you're going to do if something happens. Different regions of the country are more susceptible to different types of disasters. Of course, like down in the mountains, the wildfires down there, other areas out west, tornadoes, of course the coastal regions, t hurricanes, that sort of thing, flooding. So the first thing that you should do is to consider the type of disaster that you're going to be facing. And that's what you're going to need to plan for. Of course, if you live somewhere where there is a potential for multiple disasters, then you need to plan for those disasters as much as possible. I wrote an article on my website, and I will link it down in the description, boomsticktactical.com, that goes into a little bit of detail on a few, few things that you guys want to consider. You always want to make sure that your plan is known by everyone in your family. You don't want to just know it yourself, and none of your family members have any kind of involvement. You need to get them involved in what you're doing. They need to know where to go if... Uh, if there's a rallying point for you all to meet, which is a great idea, uh, if something happens, there also needs to be a rallying point outside of your home area in case you do have to evacuate. Everyone needs to know what that point is. You cannot plan for your cell phones. I mean, these things are great devices, but one thing that we see that happens in a lot of disasters is that cell service goes out. So you cannot rely on cell phones for communications. So you need to plan accordingly. Have that rendezvous lo location that everyone knows about to where if something does happen and you all cannot talk for whatever reason, if the services are down, that you all know to get to that point. 
the same if it's outside of your area, if it's outside of your home area, to know where that point is if you're forced to evacuate. And a good set of walkie-talkies, the old-fashioned walkie-talkies, can be a tremendous help also. When the cell service goes down, a walkie-talkie, the ranges on some of these things is quite amazing today. I mean, within a couple of miles, uh, you guys get within a few miles of each other, you might be able to communicate that way if, you know, something happens, you guys can let each other know what's going on, uh, at, you know, while you're trying to get to your rendezvous point. You also need to know if you're going to be able to stay in your home or if you're going to have to evacuate, obviously. Uh, you know, sometimes a disaster happens, you may be able to stay right in your own home. If you have the supplies, if you have the necessities, but if it doesn't, to, uh, if it doesn't happen that way, if you are forced to leave, what do you do? Do you have supplies staged that will do you? You need to plan for 72 hours. Uh, you need to have water. That's a big, big thing. It's water, good, clean drinking water. Uh, we see during each of these disasters that that's one of the big hot commodities is bottled water, uh, you know, fresh drinking water. The, the floods down there in Texas, people were selling bottled waters for small fortunes. I mean, it's just ridiculous. You know, people didn't have any choice. And, uh, you know, the price gougers took advantage of them. And, you know, what could they do? They had to have clean water. So that's something that you want to think about. You need to plan for one gallon per person per day. Also, if you have any pets, depending on the pet, plan for that for them also. Uh, you know, smaller animals may not require that much, but it's a good idea to have that little bit of extra water in case you need it. Food, and we cannot forget medical supplies. For those who are on prescription medications, that sort of thing, you have got to have some type of emergency plan in place for your prescription medications. If, uh, you know, if you have copies of your prescriptions or even the empty bottles, uh, you may keep some of those or whatever. And if a major disaster does happen, depending on your pharmacy, some pharmacists, a lot of your larger chain pharmacists can share the prescription information. But that's a critical, critical thing for people that are dependent on a lot of uh, medications. And uh, self-defense, there's a lot of things that you need to think about. And I want you to check out the article, again, on my website, boomsticktactical.com. And I want you to read over some of the things that I talk about in there. And let me hear from you. Uh, let me know down in the comments if you guys have any kind of plan in place for dealing with a natural disaster. I mean, we always hear... We, uh, different ones talk about the zombie apocalypse and who doesn't love a good zombie apocalypse every now and then or government takeover that sort of thing but one thing that does happen regularly is natural disasters anyways guys uh, let me hear from you again tell me what uh, if any plans that you have uh, down in the description visit the website check out the article and let me hear from you guys this is something I think it's an important topic. I think that we have seen why it is an important topic from the recent tragedies, from the hurricanes, and uh, it's something that we each need to consider and need to take steps to prepare for. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe. Drop me any comments down below, and we'll see you next time. Prepare to survive.